in the outer reaches of space, on this, a planet not too dissimilar from our own, there lives one creature so evil, so despicably horrible, that very few even dare to speak its name. To many, it is known simply as the Common Sea Snail. But, for those brave enough to voice its true title, it is known only as the Welk. His name was Wilfred, and he was a Welk. A Welk with big ambitions. Up until now, Wilfred had had a peaceful life, living under his shell in a place known as the Welk Zone. To outsiders, it was a dangerous place, littered with the bones of unfortunate passers-by, and cursed by rumours of black magic. But to him, it had always been home. Despite what its name implied, the Welk Zone was in fact home to many different species of sea creature, all of which one day dreamed of world domination. There was the Shrimps, who would conquer the world through happiness. There was the Hermit Crabs, who would take over the world with kindness. And there were the Catfish, who would conquer the world with friendship. But Wilfred knew the Welks weren't like these other soft-hearted species. You could say they were built different. They weren't afraid to get their hands dirty. And he was sure that in time, they would be the ones to take over the entire planet. Wilfred was determined to contribute towards the Welks' inevitable success. He wanted to write his name in the history books. And, with this in mind, he sought guidance from the Council of Welks. The Council was comprised of the wisest but most mysterious members of the community. They encircled him on all sides, and before he even had time to ask for advice, they began to tell him his prophecy. He was the Chosen One, destined to be a great warrior, a symbol of strength and power that would spearhead their conquest. It was to this end that he was invited to enlist in the official Welk training regime, and he was assigned his very own supervisor, a prestigious Welk by the name of Chief Commander Shellworth. Wilfred travelled with his new instructor, and it wasn't long before they began lesson number one. His first task was to gather as many skeletons as possible. Wilfred didn't think this would be too difficult, as the Welk zone was of course covered in skeletons. According to Chief Commander Shellworth, Welks get the majority of their power from the bones of their enemies. The only thing they ate more than bones was Putty Falu yogurt. Wilfred went around picking up all of the fossils he could find, and with each one, he felt himself growing stronger. He also insisted on making this weird noise while he did so. I'm not too sure what that was about, but with enough energy stored up inside him, Shellworth decided that Wilfred was ready to learn the sacred technique. First though, they had to find someone to practice on. Wilfred recalled the nest of hermit crabs from earlier, but hermit crabs are very nervous creatures, and they all ran away. This would not do, and searching elsewhere, they came across a nest of puffins. The puffins stood their ground. After all, they ate whelks for breakfast on the daily. These would be perfect. Shellworth instructed Wilfred to tense all of his intestines at once. Bit weird, thought Wilfred, but he did as he was ordered, and before long, he felt the tension and power building up inside of him. Well, it was either that or he was feeling very, very sick. Eventually, the tension was too much to hold in, and he exploded in a burst of fury. Flames erupted from inside him, and the puffin was burnt to a crisp. The sacred technique was fire breathing. Wilfred felt unstoppable. The puffin stood no chance, and he swiftly turned them all into charcoal. Lesson one complete, it was time for task number two. Wilfred was going to learn to charge. There was one small problem with this. Welks only had one foot. Therefore, any charging they did had to be done by hopping. Shellworth led him back to the Hermit Crab's base. Wilfred didn't quite understand. If he hopped towards the crabs now, surely they would just run away again. But Chief Commander Shellworth had it all figured out. He instructed Wilfred to build tension as he had done before. Only this time, instead of tensing his intestines, he would focus the tension into his one foot. 
He did so, and the pressure became so intense that Wilfred sprang forwards, and he was launched so far he collided with his target and sent the hermit crab into a daze. Wow! Combined with his fireball attack, this was going to be a deadly combo. Drunk on his newfound power, Wilfred and Shelworth went around the neighbourhood, causing carnage and destruction wherever they went. By the time they were done, almost every other sea creature in the Welk Zone had been driven to extinction. All except for one. And this constituted the third and final part of Wilfred's training. He would have to defeat a beast so horrible that it had kept the Welks from leaving the Welk Zone all of this time. It sent shivers down the shell of even Chief Commander Shellworth. Frog monsters. But, unfazed and more determined than ever, Wilfred used his charge to dart into action. The frog monsters piled on top of him, but he sent fireball after fireball into the fray, and they began to fall one by one. In no time at all, he had the upper hand. It was frog's legs for dinner, boys, char-grilled and roasted to perfection. Wilfred had proved himself a formidable soldier. The frog monsters were made extinct, and his training was complete. With nothing more to prove, Wilfred made the arduous journey all the way back to his home nest, where, eagerly awaiting his return, the Council of Welks had gathered once again. They welcomed him with much enthusiasm. He had done a great job, they said. It was exactly as the prophecy had foretold. All he had to do now was bathe in the Crimson Sea, and he would transform into the ultimate Welk champion. Wilfred was happy beyond words. He rushed to the shore and dipped himself straight into the dark red ocean. Yes, he could feel it. He was transforming into the hero of his dreams. It was amazing, but... Oh, as he stepped out of the ocean, nothing seemed to have changed. Perhaps he did something a bit wrong. No matter, he was sure the Council of Welks would have a perfectly good explanation for this, but as he returned, he began to hear the distant sound of Gregorian chanting. The Council was singing a hymn of sorts, a kind of ritual song. That was strange. The music was stirring an unusual feeling inside him. He started to get dizzy, and the world began to spin. He was feeling angry. But he wasn't just angry, he was full of rage. A rage that was swelling, getting bigger and bigger and bigger until... <laughs> he was giant. This must have been what the council had meant. He was so big, the biggest whelk ever to exist and he was going to cause more chaos and destruction than anyone could imagine. Yes. Run, little hermit crabs. Run in fear. Wilfred stomped across the land, laying waste to anyone who fell in his path. Puffins cowered in terror. Even monkeys became nothing but sport. He was the one true god of this wor- Wait. Hang on. This wasn't right. There was a whelk that was bigger than him. Impossible, but the council said, Oh God! He plunged back into the Crimson Sea. He needed more, more size, more power. He grew and grew and grew until he was the size of a building, taller than the tallest of skyscrapers. Now, surely he was the greatest around. He could take down bears in a single swipe, crush pears with a moment's notice, and yet, no. Still, there were whelks just as big as him. It couldn't be. The council had lied. Did this mean he wasn't the chosen one? Was it all just a stitch up? A ploy to make Wilfred one of their mindless, angry soldiers? Well, it had made him angry all right. But there was no way in seven hells he would fall in line with these other brain-dead fools. He was special. He was the chosen one. And he would prove it. Wilfred used all of his combat skills to take the other giant whelks down. Surely this would show them. They would have to see that he was different. He was supposed to be a hero. He was supposed... supposed to be... And then, 
everything went blank. It had all gone to plan. The Council of Welks had managed to create an army of super soldiers, and in no time at all, they had taken over the world. But their greed was not yet satisfied, and through more horrible experiments and devious witchcraft, they stumbled upon an even greater evil. A portal between worlds, a rip in the space-time continuum, known as the Menu. They now had access to worlds they never even knew existed, and this would allow them to send giant whelks to parallel universes. They sent whelks to dimensions ruled by salmons and bears, to a far-off place full of crabs known as the Crustacean Nation, to a world ruled by pirate penguins that sailed the high seas, and finally, to a world full of fruit ruled by pears. The Welks tore across each existence, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. One by one, whole civilizations were terrorized, and in some cases, completely wiped out. This had to stop, or reality itself would be nothing but Welks. The universe had reached its final hour, and in the face of extinction, it was time for the real heroes to step up. There were so many allies to gather. Frutius Maximus had work to do.